All right, this will be our last episode. We'll try to make some progress. We'll try to finish this conversation, too. Or rather, my talking indulgently here. The smart zombie grabs all the other zombies, and he leads them to Fiddler's Green. And there's a bunch of, like, politics inside the city you deal with, and there's many things ensue. Does this take place from Bubba's perspective, or does it go to both? He gets interludes, and he's definitely a character in this thing, but the main character is the guy who leads the Dead Reckoning. And he is looking to retire. He wants out, and retirement is supposed to get you observation notes, a bunch of notes. There seems to be a kind of shield around the command center. This might be why the tanks haven't been able to make a dent in it. Nothing at all seems to penetrate the shield. It cackles in red, completely unlike anything we've ever seen before. We have been observing the base carefully. This might be our last chance to get this right. There are two smaller structures that seem linked to the command center. We have noticed them generating some kind of electrical field. We think that's what's powering the command center shields. If we get to them and expose their course, we might be able to take them out. If I'm right, this should be enough to disrupt the electrical field and lower the command center shields. If our reinforcements had already driven in their guns blazing without a plan, we might actually have a chance now. But there's only three of us left, and Veslin isn't responding to our communications. Damn it, we might actually need to do this by ourselves. Can't stay hidden here much longer. Machine patrol will notice us sooner or later. But can we really do this with only three soldiers? We'll need to gather more ammunition for sure. Even with this plan, we're still going to need a lot of firepower to pull this off. Dude, these damn robots have no respect. Um, there's one. There's two. Where's the third one? Oh, he's, got... he's got anything on him. So he's obviously going for a whole social commentary on capitalism, blah, blah, blah. And because he's now aware of his whole social criticism thing, he it's just not near as tactful or artful. He he does he puts the cart before the horse, basically, before he told a really good story and then did a metaphor. And there happened to be metaphor in the story. Now he starts with a metaphor. He's like, let's go after capitalism. And then he puts the story around it. And it just doesn't work as well. And it probably could have worked. But it doesn't because there's just not enough space in an hour and a half for him to really, like, he's built a really big world. You know, he's got this damn island, and they've got this society and this hierarchy inside it. He's got these marauding groups that power the city, and there's a lot to go there. And then there's zombies, and they're getting smart. They're not trained anymore. They're just naturally becoming smart because they're still human at the end of the day. Anyway, it all ends with Bub teaching the zombies how to cross the river in, I think it's like in Pittsburgh, it's got a name, but they cross it, they go under it, they all arrive in the city, which bypasses the city's defenses. Another thing is, just like in Day of the Dead, Dr. Logan chops the zombies up, and so they have all these zombies trapped in a mine shaft, they fall into the mine shaft, and then they like, they coax them to come, and they basically like, put a noose around their neck, and they bring him to Dr. Logan so he can experiment on them. And the zombies stop getting goaded into going into these stockades because they realize that Dr. Logan's just going to chop them up. The lady's like, they're learning. They're actually learning. They do the same thing in that movie. They're like, um, the zombies stop going into the Fiddler's Green's main defenses. They have this massive electrical fence erected and they have these big sniper towers all around the city and the city used to like get zombies all the time and they're they keep talking about how like almost no zombies show up and try the gates anymore so the zombies have somehow learned and then pulled the other zombies it's not even worth trying i guess i don't know yeah it's kind of silly like at first it makes sense but then you think like how do the other zombies know that how do they communicate that but they moan back and forth, and in Day of the Dead, he kind of implies that they have this sort of loose communication system through their grunts and moans. Uh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so Fiddler's Green isn't attacked, and all the zombies are just standing on the riverbank, Hold and... On. What? You're talking to me? We're heading yeah. for the mission here. Is that your mom or Madison? Madison. 
Well, it's not 6.30, so we're fine. Tucker, come here. There's something interesting for the mission. Should be 637. Why do we need to bring utensils? I don't know. Pause panicking, apparently. No, oh, we're fine. They're just Let's finish this episode. We're only five minutes in. We have to at least go five more minutes. Where is that? Come up here. There's a quest. So the butcher zombie comes up to the river and starts shoving other zombies in, and they cross the river, and they sneak into the city, and all hell breaks loose. Fiddler's Green falls, and the dead... There's this scene where the lead character is going to take dead reckoning and go to Canada, where George Romero lives, and Canada's supposed to be safe, and you basically got to get the hell out of the United States. Like It's just really heavy-handed bullshit. And the zombies are supposed to take... And the zombies are allowed to take over Fiddler's Green. And the zombie looks at the lead character, and the lead character looks at the zombie. They both meet eyes, and then they both go go their separate ways. So it's it's kind of hokey. But I rewatched it recently. It's not the worst movie ever. It just wasn't what we probably wanted. Then he makes two really atrocious movies. Diary of the Dead, uh, I used to like enjoy. Recently rewatched it. It's terrible. How do you know? Because it's not aged well. It's like really freaking hokey. It's neat because it takes place. It basically tries to remap the events of Night of the Living Dead in a modern time frame. So it's one of those like found footage movies. But, you know, whatever. It's a thing. It was a thing back then because Cloverfield and a bunch and Blair Witch Project basically proved you could do these like really cheap on the fly movies and they could still make a ton of money. It just has an age. So it goes dawn. It goes night, day, land, diary. And then by far the worst zombie movie he made in one of the worst zombie movies, not the worst, but one. And in the top, yeah, ever. In the top, probably my top five worst zombie wow. movies. Which is really sad because this is the guy that made the genre. This is the guy that invented it. This is the guy that has the best zombie movies ever. But in the, then in the same, in his, the final leg of his career, he goes on to make some of the worst zombie movies ever. Survival of the Dead is atrocious. It's on an island where two, like the Hatfields and the McCoys, Two families are feuding, and they can't agree on what to do with the zombies. One family wants to... I don't know what we're supposed to do back there. Do you? No idea. Okay, it says, locate the Mulsavagan ring fort in the farmlands region. Didn't we just do that? Sorry, we have to go back. My fault. I led us astray. Uh, they're feuding, and they don't know what to do about the zombies, and one group thinks that you're supposed to leave them alone, and you should just, like, let them, like, lock them up, and you can cure them eventually, and the other group thinks... And it actually takes the character from Diary of the Dead and gives him his own, like, side quest. Kind of weird. And that character goes on this island because he's heard that it's safe, and he finds out that these people aren't killing the zombies and a girl gets infected and she rides horses she's a zombie horse rider and what? she like yeah, it's so dumb and she somehow looks kind of beautiful but gracious and she leads the zombies and then the two lead characters the feuding family members they become infected and they still go out with guns and start shooting at each other as zombies and that's so confusing. oh it's dumb as hell and it's the special effects are awful. The whole movie is trash. Did he not have a big budget that time, or was he just... He like was too old as... Dude, this compass system is constantly leading us astray. That is not actually the way. How old was Romero when he wrote this? Dude, I don't even know if he wrote it. He had other people in his circle at that point that wanted to kind of, like... Oh, for sure. And he was, like, in his late 70s, and he'd run off cigarettes and coffee for like 900 years so he was in shitty health 
And I know this because I listened to, I have the DVD. Again, your grandpa might got it for me. And I listened to the director's commentary on the DVD. And Romero sounds like Joe Biden. He's like demented, like, ooh, I was, I was sick. Because his, his co-director, who apparently did most of the shooting, is like, oh, I remember, George. You had a terrible cold that night. I did? Yeah, you were so sick. You were coughing up these massive black balls of tar. It's like, oh. He, like, wasn't even aware he shot the movie. They just stuck his name on it. So, thank you, Tucker, for asking that question and listening. It's your turn. Well, I haven't watched any of them. How about this? More in your circle. Pacific Rim, the books, tier list. Okay, movies and books, your favorite stories from the Pacific Rim universe. Um, favorite was... Really like to... Felt like just an overall pretty good movie. It wasn't like groundbreaking or anything. Yeah. Had like shots and scenes. Monsters had cool designs, so did the mechs and uh -huh. hey, it's an in route. In route. Dude, why does the marker keep leading us astray and what are we supposed to do to finish this thing? Over here there's a safe house. Alright, let's just go get the safe house and then we'll have to leave, I guess. Continue. First so number one is the first Pacific Rim. You love the monster and the mech design. Yeah, and then the story is good. The fight scenes are pretty nice. Um, mm -hmm. The second one is uh, Tales of the Breach. Ooh, tell me about that. Well, I, th I don't know if that's what it's called. I think it's called Tales of Tactic. I really liked that book because Tactic Ronin was the first mech that humanity made. Uh-huh. Well, the first, like, one of the first mechs. That the they first made. Jaeger, right? Is yeah, that what they're called? It was the second ever Jaeger. Okay. Um, and it was just a story about their pilots. They had, and it's a, uh, I had, I really liked this one because the, this was a book because there's no way that they would have made this. Mm -hmm. It's just way too short to make it into a movie. What, what made you enjoy the story? Well, it starts off with them killing like a category one kaiju and then, but they, this was during the prototypes, so it was, the technology wasn't fully perfected, so the pilots got in, like, their brains got injured from it. They got, like, brain damage from it. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they couldn't, what do they call that in that universe? Like, sinking or whatever? Uh, I can't remember what it's called. Drifting. Right? That's when they, that's when their minds connect, yeah. I think it's called like drift psychosis. Oh, the sickness. I just meant when they go and they're actually like synced up, what they call that. Uh, I remember what it, I, I know what you're talking about. Uh, it was like a mental handshake or something. Okay. But it has a cooler name. <laughs> mm hmm. But um, with that, they kill a category one kaiju. That's like the weakest that the kaiju get. Uh huh. Then, like a couple weeks later, they're still healing and Tactic Ronin is still being repaired because during that battle, the reactor got damaged and that's what's caused some of the pilots uh, damage to their brain. Oh, wow. And they would be discharged because they wouldn't be able to fight anymore without dying because if they were to get into another Jaeger and drift, they would die. Their brains would melt. Holy shit. So you kind of like the, like the science and the hiccups of the early technology. Yeah, but um, then a category one, category two kaiju shows up and destroys a Jaeger, and now Tactic Ronin is the only one that was the only Jaeger there that could defeat it in time. Wrap the thought because we have to go. Sorry. Where we gotta go? Home. Wrap the thought though. Category one Jaeger comes up, and what happens? Or category two kaiju, uh, down the water, and there was a Jaeger sent to respond to was at mark two but it got defeated mm -hmm. 
Tactic Ronin had to take it out. So the pilots, they, the pilots and the uh, government already knew that they were gonna die from it. Uh huh. And while they're fighting, they're like going through memories and how they met because it's husband and wife. Those are the pilots. On Tactic Ronin. Yeah. And there was only like a couple. It was only like a couple people who who could actually like do it, like drift compatible. Some people just couldn't do it. Mhm. Mm and there, there's a bunch of cool uh, tools that you see tactic using because there's stuff that you don't that you didn't know that they had. Like tactic had a bunch of machine guns on their chest that it would use to shoot, and it had like blades that could fall out from its arm. And it was it had a bunch of cool. Um, underwater fights and all that stuff because the battle goes on for a long time. And it kind of just... I don't know, it's like strangely wholesome because it kind of... That's nice. After they beat the kaiju. But that's why I like that one quite a bit. I can't remember the name of the other book or what happens in it. I think I only got one Pacific Rim book. And that leaves... Uh, Pacific Rim Uprise. It isn't a bad movie. It's just not as good compared Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I want to hear the tier list in detail, so let's, let's on the next recording, let's get back into that, okay? Okay. Sweet. All right, peace, guys. Bye-bye.